Lost in Space is back. Ten episodes have debuted on Netflix and I've watched them all. Is it any good? Yes. Yes it is. Go watch it. End of video. Okay, I'll say a little bit more. Go get our kids. And get them off this planet. Lost in Space is a reimagining of the 60s series, also called Lost in Space, which centred on the Robinson family who are leaving Earth to go to their new home, Alpha Centauri. But would you believe it? On the way, they get lost. In space. The original series, I own it. You might, I think you can just about see it behind me. It's hard to... There it is. There it is. Um, I love it. I do, but I appreciate that it's not good. Uh, it started all right like it was a serious drama for a few episodes um and then it descended into the ridiculousness and i love the ridiculousness of lost in space i do i enjoy it but i think that's purely from a nostalgia level if i hadn't seen it as a kid i don't think i could watch it now uh, it's been rebooted before uh, 1998 saw the matt leblanc starring lost in space movie which was terrible and i've reviewed that very recently you can see that i'll put a link in the description for that so hopes were riding on Netflix to give us a good Lost in Space story and for the most part they have. The story and the characters needed updating they did and they've done it well I think here the characters most of them and there's one I don't particularly care for that much but the majority of them certainly the Robinson family for me work brilliantly well together and they're played by a group of actors and actresses who are fantastic like in the Lost in Space movie, the 1998 one, the character of Will, I struggled with. I couldn't believe that this kid was smart. I couldn't believe that he was smarter than his whole family. Here, I believe him. All of the actors are very good here, but it's Maxwell Jenkins, I think, that stood out the most for me. He's given a lot to do as Will, and he nails it. And he nails some very emotional moments as well. There was um, the end of episode six. Oh, and I should mention spoilers. Spoilers for Lost in Space here. Going to be talking lots of spoilers. Okay, warning given. The end of episode six, where I think it was episode six, where he orders the robot to kill himself and to walk off that clip, like that floored me. I wasn't expecting to get emotional in Lost in Space, but I did it. And that was largely down to Maxwell Jenkins' performance. Like he sold me there as this kid who was doing a horrible thing, but for what he thought was the right reasons. OG Lost in Space primarily focused on Will the Robot and Dr. Smith. They were the three breakout characters and the show ran with them. It neglected a lot of the others, particularly the female characters. Maureen, Penny, Judy, they weren't given a lot to do. For a lot of time they were background characters and only every now and then were they allowed a moment in the spotlight. It really didn't happen all that often. Here on the other hand, they're all front and centre and it's brilliant. Maureen Robinson is really the star of the show. She's the one that's in command. She's the brains of all this. John Robinson, who, yeah, he's a co-lead as well, but he, it feels like he's answering to Maureen a lot. It feels like Maureen is the one calling the shots, and it's so refreshing to see that. And this really is a show that focuses on character. Take Judy, for example. The first episode, she's trapped in that ice, which was, yeah, it was uncomfortable viewing. But in other shows, and I expected in this sort of show as well, that to be forgotten about. But it's not. Episodes go by and she's still having flashbacks to that. She's still traumatised by what happened to her and what she went through. And it's nice to see that Lost in Space is happy to allow these characters to act in natural ways and allow things to have a real impact on them. For the most part. Because while the yeah, air characters remember what happened and they feel things and they're affected by events, there's also times where something huge happens and that's kind of neglected. Take the end of episode 8. Episode 8 for me is the best episode of this of this 10 episode run. It's just fantastic. Start to finish fantastic. And that ending, the ship exploding with John and Don on it, is... I was jaw-dropped watching that. I wasn't expecting that to happen. Obviously I knew they were still going to be alive, but it was still such a shock moment. But then there's not really much of seeing the family grieve. A lot of time couldn't have passed between that happening and the start of episode 9. But it could have been weeks. We get the reference to it. We get Will saying, no, they're still alive. I'm sure they are. And well done, Will, you're smart. But there was no grieving. 
I never saw the family really showing any genuine upset about it. It was almost brushed under the carpet quickly because they had something else to do. And while yes, they did have something else to do, they needed to get off this planet, it still would have been nice for them to show some kind of despair at losing this husband and father figure. And Don. Don was cool. Then there's the robot, the character that I was the most worried about in this. In the original series, I loved the robot. I loved everything about him. His little claw hands, his weird circular like, dome head. I loved him. Such a great character. One of my all-time favourite characters, despite the fact that he's a bit silly. So I was worried when we were going to get a new robot who seemed very, very different. But then I guess he had to be. I guess you couldn't have the same sort of 60s version of a robot on a show like this. I wasn't expecting the robot to be this good. Like He's a very different beast. He's not the chatterbox like the original robot was. He bas- His vocabulary consists of Danger Will Robinson, or Danger, insert name of whoever saved me here. He doesn't say a great deal more, but it's all in his actions. You can see that this is a creature that's learning, that's trying to acclimatise to his situation and the people that he's with. And he's a much more involving character than I ever thought he would be. Like The robot floored me in this. He was so good. And that sacrifice he made at the end, the end of episode 10, just I'm not sure I really bought into it too much that he would suddenly remember Will Robinson, but it was such a great moment that I can forgive that. It looks like we'll be seeing a lot more of the robot and his history and his backstory in season two. So yeah, hopefully that gets commissioned and we get to see that because I love that character. There is, however, one character of the, of the main bunch that I didn't care for that much, and that is Dr. Smith. I'm not really sure where the problems lie here, whether it's with Parker Posey's performance. And she's a great actress, so I don't know if it is her or it's the writing or it's both. But Dr. Smith doesn't come across as a natural villain. She's far too moustache twirling for me to be able to invest in. The twist at the end of episode one that she's not actually Dr. Smith and the name is June Harris. Great Lost in Space nod there to the original. It was awesome. I love seeing Bill Moomy back even though it was very briefly. It was great seeing him as the proper Dr. Smith and I thought we had a villain that was going to be great. It was going to be really really interesting throughout this but very quickly it just seemed that there was no real purpose to the character of June. It was almost like she was there because the writers felt they needed a bad guy in this. They needed a villain. And I guess they did, but they could have done a lot better than what they did here. I mean, it is fun having a character like June who just wants to look after herself. That's it. She doesn't care about anybody else, mostly. It's She looks after number one, and that's it. That's cool. I enjoy that, but there needs to be more to it. And I personally didn't get that from June. I just found her to be very, very one note, which is a shame. I was I was hoping for more, and she's still around, so hopefully we'll get more in season two now that she's going to be forced to work with this family a lot more. But yeah, I wasn't overly impressed with her in this first season. The show also made some choices that I didn't think I was going to be a fan of. For starters, I wanted a lot more of being lost in space. Like we get some space stuff later in the season, but when this begins, we're in space for about five minutes and then the ship comes crashing down and we spend the rest of the time on this planet. That disappointed me initially, but then it started to remind me of a show that not a lot of people seem to watch called Terra Nova. I loved that show and that's what Lost in Space most reminds me of. It reminds me a lot more of Terra Nova than it does of the original Lost in Space. I was also interested in whether the writers would be able to, to keep up the quality of writing and to keep stories interesting when all they had to write for was the Robinson family, a robot who says one thing, uh, Don West and Dr. Smith. I I wasn't sure how they were going to do it, but I was interested to see. It turns out their way of getting around that is to have a lot more characters in. Now, yeah, the original Lost in Space had a guest star from time to time. Quite a lot of episodes had them coming across people and meeting new people, but they weren't with their own people. They weren't as part of a community like they are here. The planet that they crash on has lots of other Jupiters there, not just the Jupiter 2, and it has lots of other people for them to interact with, some people that they know. It's it's their own people, it's other humans from Earth. And while, yeah, I do think it's a shame that they took away the isolation factor that the original had, that it was just this family and they had nobody else, I do think it was best for this particular show, at least for the first season. For example, if it wasn't for these other characters, then Penny would have had very, very little to do. And it was nice seeing how people like John Robinson are viewed by others. So yeah, it wouldn't have been my initial choice of how to go about things, but I think for the most part it paid off. 
Also, I have to talk about how great this show looks. Visually, this is stunning. I think it's the best use of 4K on Netflix so far. There were numerous times that I'd rewind and go back and just watch something again just because of how good it looked. Like production-wise, this was incredibly high standard. But there are some issues. Lost in Space tends to devolve into a problem-solving show. Like each episode, there's something else that needs to be fixed, some other problem that you need to get through. And there are times where the writing lets it down. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's brilliant. There are a lot of scenes just of the characters interacting that I loved. But then there's also forced ways of getting to point. And there's no better example than the last episode. It's John Robinson and Don West. Um, I haven't really mentioned Don West. I do like him. He annoyed me a bit at first. I liked him more as it went on. Just to get my Don West piece there. But they're stuck on a bit of a ship after they thought they died. It's a bit of their shuttle and they're clinging on and they're waiting for rescue. And the writers obviously thought that they needed John and Don to be able to open up to each other. To be able to talk and share their feelings and get to know each other and let the audience get to know them too so the way they did this was to temporarily blind Don and the only way that he'd be able to solve the problem that they had is by crying so he could get rid of this bit of dust and um, and save the day it was a really manufactured way of doing it it didn't feel natural to me at all it just felt like a very forced way to get these people talking when to be honest they were stuck facing death like they may well have thought they could have died conversations like the ones that they had should have just evolved naturally from what they were talking about anyway it didn't need to be some real forced scenario to make it happen and there's lots of moments like that scattered about lost in space but on the whole i really like what they did here i'm excited for season two i really hope it happens i hope enough people are watching it like please do go watch it it's fun sci-fi it doesn't take itself too seriously there are moments that are really dramatic like that end of episode six that i said just floored me but it's an easy watch. It's a nice kind of sci-fi that we haven't had in a while. And yeah, I'm all on board for a second season if it happens. I'm going to give Netflix's Lost in Space an 8 out of 10. Have you watched Lost in Space? If so, did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Let's talk about it. You can follow me on Twitter at Joe P. Julians. Uh, hit like on this video if you enjoyed it. It would certainly help me out. Hit subscribe as well because I enjoy seeing the little number go up. It makes me smile. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.